Hi guys, my name is Renz and this is another episode of uh, Propeller On Air, Propeller Ads, oh well, number one podcast? I hope so. Let's see. Are we shooting there? I guess. Aiming higher. All right, this is a special, special episode. We are talking about something that everyone is concerned of, uh, affiliate trends for 2021. And we are joined by two very special guests. And what I mean by special, very special, we're joined by Luke Kling, a web developer, blogger. What else can we say about this guy? Founder of Athlift, FP Traffic. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, especially with that beautiful intro. <laughs> well, <laughs> I did practice that. So let's go on to Emmanuel because I'm also excited to intro him. Emmanuel Sinka, live from Vienna, stack marketer, CEO, founder. How are you, bud? Doing great. Just hoping for some uh, snow here for Christmas, but otherwise everything is awesome. Still no snow? Well, we, it snowed one, one, once, one day. So like, I hope I'm hoping for a little bit more. You know. Well, I know Vienna is wet. Like in general, it's wet, right? <laughs> I mean, all year round. Mm, it depends on the season. So we have everything. It's okay. just like uh, you know. Cool. How about Miami, Luke? What's going on? I'm actually, I'm actually by Gaines. I'm a little north of Miami, but uh, it's rainy here. But Hopefully no snow. Really <laughs> so the snow opposite here. hopes of <laughs> <laughs> But I guess that's why you're in Florida, so. <laughs> right, right. If it dries well, up if... a little bit, I'll go golfing. Oh. Nice. That's nice. Well, I mean, propeller ads were, I mean, our commercial side uh, department is located in Cyprus, so it's frankly sunny, like probably like 363 days a year. <laughs> so no complaints, guys. No complaints. So, yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna jump right into the questions because uh, you know I'm very interested, and I'm sure that the audience that we have is also quite concerned, you know, eager to you know know about your input, your suggestions, your opinions about, in general, like affiliate marketing in 2021. We all know that 2020 for all of us in this industry and universal wise, you know, we're not just going to talk about affiliate marketing, but also in general. Um, it has been quite a challenging year, and also personal-wise, I guess, for both of you, right? Um, so, I really want to focus on uh, affiliate marketing, but could you guys tell me a little bit about your daily lives? How has that changed, Luke? I mean, um, from the day that all of this started, the pandemic. Yeah, so, well, I've had, I've had quite a few changes. Um, I have a daughter who's in preschool. And uh, prior to, to COVID and the lockdowns and stuff, like I was taking her to school. Then I was working all morning at a coffee shop, like working on all the Atlas stuff. And, um, and then I'd go pick her up, come home, do some more work and stuff like that. And uh, I really enjoy working at coffee shops. It's like my favorite thing. It's like Me a, too, actually. I don't know. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's the reason I like working remote. And yeah. uh, now that like, you know, is no longer a thing. So... Uh, she's, my daughter is now work, uh, doing school here at home and I'm working at home and my two year old is here at home and my wife is at home. So it's all been, you know, it's a bit of a challenge as far as just keeping productivity up. I think that's probably for, sure. for me than the, than the biggest thing. Um, I bought an espresso maker so I can make my own lattes. Uh, so I got that going for me, but, <laughs> that's um, cool. besides, you know, there, there's definitely, I mean, this year has been, been crazy. Everybody's had so many different challenges. Um, you know, for, for me, I think I've been pretty lucky, you know, the fact that I work from home already and have experience. So moving to working from home or working remote wasn't a big deal for me. Um, the productivity side has just been the biggest thing for me anyway. That's cool. You know, it's very important to balance everything out, you know, I mean, especially what you mentioned, like, you know, your family's home and then your work is also like remote. So you can work well, essentially from anywhere. So from, you know, you like working at coffee shops and then just being home, I guess it just needed a little bit of adjustment, right? And just balancing yes. everything out. All right, cool. What about you, Emmanuel? I mean, I know obviously that you also work remote. Um, you can also mm -hmm. work remote um, and you have your, your team. So how is the productivity and how has your, you know, your daily life in terms of, I mean, your personal daily lives, uh, you know, have changed? Uh, it's less of a change for me, I would say, because I, right. I, I, although we work like we work remotely, but I prefer working from my home office. So that didn't change much for me in terms of like my daily routine when it comes to work. But just the fact that you cannot 
kind of, you know, even though I was working from home, it was nice to know that, okay, you can, you know, there's some conferences where you take some time off, you travel a little exactly. bit, those sort of things, mm -hmm. you kind of like, first half of the year or so was like whatever, but now after almost the full year of this, you kind of feel it and it's like, would be nice to have some, you know, a little bit of a change of pace. I would say things got a little bit, a little bit more monotonous overall for me, that that's like right. the, the biggest change. So like, don't get me wrong, I like working from home and it's great, but it, for example, um, Affiliate World Asia and Bangkok was always a nice change of pace, in my view at least. So yeah. that's not happening this year, which is kind of like you kind of feel it a little bit. For sure. What about the online conferences, guys? What do you think of them? Uh, I, I haven't seen any conference that like really impressed me in terms of, you know, like replacing real like real life conference in person conferences. Um, I think there's still a lot to figure out there. Um, so, yeah, I, I think most people don't attend the conferences for the speeches maybe that catches right. their attention but they attend to hang out with people like in person mm -hmm. and that's something that i think virtual conferences will not replace but maybe there are some ways to do best of both worlds that's what i've kind of talked to a few people and it's like um essentially like a hybrid model where you know streaming some of the content and having some online chat rooms becomes a thing but you also have a lot of in-person attendance maybe that's exactly. the future Exactly. Have you attended any online conference, Lou? Yeah, I've gone to quite a few of the, the online conferences. Um, I would say I agree, like, it doesn't, there's not a replacement for sure. Right. Especially for B2B. Sure. Um, I'd say for B2B, it's, it's, it's not the same at all. Like, maybe for the affiliate, like, there's definitely a lot that they can gain from the digital conferences, but the, the B2B side of it, you know, me connecting with propeller ads is is just not the same uh it I, is like I, an I, offline thing you know <laughs> it does like <laughs> i attended affiliate summit west at the beginning of of 2020 before the the lockdown and stuff and it was amazing like i just had such a great experience uh going and representing Afflip and, and and uh networking with all the different companies there and i was so excited to do it in new york and then you know obviously with the lockdown and stuff that didn't happen i will say despite the the downfall of of digital conferences, the, the pitfalls of it. I think the, the experience that we've had this year has pushed a lot of good webinar content out right. and forced companies to try to use that as more of a, of a channel for their content and their marketing. And I think, I mean, you guys do a great job of it, but just in general in our industry, I feel like there's a lot of companies that are doing a good job with webinar content. Um, so that will be a positive, I think, that comes out of all this, like despite all the negatives, I think Going forward, even once conferences are a thing and we're all meeting up in Bangkok or whatever, Absolutely. I think there's a lot yeah. of companies that are still going to do great webinars and it's going to benefit everyone. Well, let's hope that, you know, this ends and we be able to catch up, you know, just face to face uh, yeah. eventually, you know. Uh, right. Listen, guys, I mean, again, as I said, a lot of, you know, uh, the audience uh, that are going to be listening to this podcast. Uh, are very much interested into what's going to happen in 2021. 2020 was tough shit for everybody, so let's just go right to it. What do you see in general that's, I mean, in terms of your own output and vision for 2021, what's going to happen in terms of trends, uh, in terms of verticals, Emmanuel? I mean, you're in the game. What do you see is going to be, you know, the next best big hit in 2021? Or at least in, in terms of trends. Uh, well, like trends are always hard to predict. Although right. to be fair, I got a little bit lucky. I think last year around this time, I predicted e-commerce, not but not because of the pandemic. So that definitely kind of panned out. If you think about it, <laughs> even more so because of the pandemic. So um, that was right. But I think like one thing to look at uh, in twenty twenty one specifically is like what was really hurt by COVID, but will definitely come back in one way or another. So like my main, the main thing I was thinking of would be the travel uh, vertical in some way, right? Like if right. people will still want to travel, like we just started this uh, podcast talking about how we would like to travel to some conferences, sure. take some time around the, you know, visit uh, the cities that the conferences take place or, in, uh, or, you know, country, the country itself. Yeah. Um, so I think traveling might see a resurgence um, than conferences, but those are not necessarily, you know, an affiliate product that uh, uh, affiliates might promote. But uh, the travel niche would be the one that I would keep my most, like, 
would keep my eye very close to. I think that's the main one uh, that comes to mind. Uh, yeah, that's kind of like the only thing that stands out. Otherwise, I would assume that work will ge generally change. So like work from home, remote working type of uh, content offers might have some benefits there. And I'm actually thinking if digital content even takes off even more, right? Because when you couldn't go to the cinema and stuff, you see now Disney Plus uh, is or exactly. like HBO Max, they're releasing movies um, that back usually to back. get released. Yeah, and they usually get released in cinema. So that might change. So might there might be more digital content out there, more streaming demand, stuff like that. And they might look for affiliates to push those offers too. While unfortunately, maybe like movie theaters uh, take a hit in uh, for in-person type of entertainment. Uh, Luke, I mean, in terms of your, you know, day-to-day -day kind of direct, I would say, uh, um, you know, connection with affiliates through Applift and all that, um, where do you see, like, the trend is going? What are affiliates uh, going to be promoting more and more? Or uh, another question, um, what verticals, which verticals will affiliates avoid? Yeah, well, I agree with uh, Manuel on like the different verticals he mentioned. Uh, I think travel is going to have a huge resurgence. I think uh, e-com is going to continue to grow. Uh, as, as far as affiliates go, like affiliates are going to promote whatever is converting. So it, it really <laughs> just depends on the the, the the ecosystem that you know we, we all end up with in in 2021. Like we didn't predict what was going to happen in 2020. Like in 2019, we have never been like. 2020 is gonna be a shit show, you know. Like, <laughs> so, uh, so what what is gonna look 2021 gonna look like? Well, I think the economy is gonna continue to struggle a little bit. Um, so I think finance is gonna be uh, a big opportunity. Uh, finance vertical, I think there's gonna be a lot of opportunity. Uh, sweeps are never uh, never ending. It's the evergreen vertical oh, that affiliates love. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I, I, and, and I like some of the stuff that the companies have been doing with sweeps lately. So I think moving forward, like next year, we're going to see uh, a lot of good offers in the sweeps vertical. And I suspect that they're going to perform pretty well for affiliates. Um, so I, I think probably sweeps is one of the, one of the bigger ones that I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to keep my eye on. And, and hopefully we're going to see a lot of traction, especially in the Atlas community, as far as like, what people are having success with and sharing, um, I think uh, sweeps is going to be a big one. Um, and any good e-com offers that we can get our hands on, I, I mean, we've already seen it with affiliates. Uh, they're blowing that stuff up. So um, companies in the e-com space need to get more affiliate friendly and realize that there's a huge opportunity here that they're passing on. Uh, so hopefully next year that, you know, depending on what happens with the vaccine and stuff like that, like hopefully we see uh, a lot of the big e-com companies or even the small like direct consumer stuff, getting more affiliate friendly and more programs opening up for us uh, to take advantage of those opportunities. I can't agree more. And I mean, I'm going to take what you mentioned about, you know, um, the affiliate marketing industry being something that is very flexible and it has always been, you know, affiliates will go from one vertical to another. I mean, fuck it. That's, that's how it is. That's how it is. I mean, we tend to see exactly uh, in terms of trends, obviously, you know, right now, I agree in terms of verticals, uh, you know, travel and, uh, well, sweepstakes is actually something very interesting that you mentioned. Um, through Propeller, we see a lot, a lot of affiliates promoting sweepstakes, maybe SOI, maybe CC submits. It's going crazy and it had never stopped. So you guys both agree that sweepstakes is like a very... Um, evergreen vertical that you know will never cease to you know uh, be alive yeah I mean when I was uh, starting out how many years ago was it like five and a half years ago that was still like one of the main ones and it always continued to be so uh, as long as I've been in the industry they've been around and doing pretty well so yeah. that that's the and most I can is. say and still is like very alive yeah absolutely I agree like I mean when I started in like 2006 with XY7, we were, we had uh, email submits, you know, those types of campaigns uh, that, you know, basically converted into sweeps for the most part. Um, so yes, no, I agree that they're not going anywhere. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what about in terms of geolocations? I mean, obviously, you know, when the pandemic started, well, let's face it, it, it originated, well, that's what they say at least, you know, in Asia. 
and that's where it hit. You know, it hit the most, and, and e-commerce also like was highly affected there at one point. But uh, I want to know your your opinion about you know the geos that would be very much affected still, and which ones do you see will have like a resurgence uh, loop? Which countries do you think that affiliate should focus more right now? As far as a resurgence in like sleep traffic, or are you talking about like in general? Oh, in general, in general. We'll talk about in general in terms of geos. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, it's crazy here in the U.S. right now. Like, you know, the, we're, we're, the pandemic is like at an all-time high, and people are still kind of out and about doing stuff. So, I don't, I don't know as far as like what countries moving into 2021 are going to be like the best opportunities with sleeps. In, in most verticals in general, I feel like there's a lot of opportunity in a lot of different places. One vertical yeah. we haven't talked we haven't talked about that I think has a huge opportunity that we've seen a increase in since uh, uh, sports started up again is online gambling, like casino and, and sports betting and stuff. Um, so the as as 2020 as we progress into 2021 and, and sports across the world continue to, to grow. Uh, and everyone's looking for an outlet, <laughs> uh, something to focus on besides, you know, what's going on around them. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll see more and more opportunities there, too. Uh, so as far as geos, uh, you know, I'll be focused on on the geos that are, are seeing an uptick in, in sports activity and, and stuff like that. And then for sleeps and stuff, I like the, like, tier two, tier three. It's, it's typically where I focus. That's cool. What about you, Emmanuel? What do you think about you know the geos that um, are quite affected right now? Which geos do you think uh, will see uh, a significant impact or increase uh, moving to twenty twenty one? Well, I, I think it depends a little bit on the vertical. So I think something like travel will be interesting. That's the vertical that I mentioned probably focusing locally so if you would have like us then even though it's tier one highly competitive i think right. you know people travel more within the us than the average other country i would assume and then probably within the eu will also make sense because uh, there'll be like less restrictions when it comes to traveling so if you if you're someone who's you know kind of mastered a travel vertical and you had a bad year but now you hope 2021 is going to be a year to you know make up for it those are probably the uh, big ones. Of course, in Asia, there's always a lot of traveling going on, but I don't know the whole legal situation there, like which restrictions and, you know, visa free, no visa, all these things. I'm sure the, those people know uh, more that who run travel in general. But right. what I would say is that something to look at all the time is like what countries have a high growth rate when it comes to internet adoption, especially on mobile. So the funny thing is there, there was a mini case study, let's call it on Twitter about the geo effect, like J I O in India, right? So like they offered free internet for a lot of people and how uh -huh. hundreds of millions of people became connected in India and how India basically is like this first or second most active uh, population on YouTube now. And the sec first or second on uh, Facebook and everything like that. So what's you know how much growth there still is in india and then you know find the next india even though it's not like a country with over a billion people uh, for example brazil or indonesia or i don't know all the countries in the world but you know like do a list of population and then look at internet penetration and see what's going on there and you might find some interesting opportunities when i was uh, running a lot of sweepstakes it was always interesting to do uh, like uh, luke said like tier two tier three and especially always found some nice winners in Latin America and the Middle East. Not all countries, not every time, but depending on the offer, you might have some gold mines there because both of them are pretty high population compared to what you would think. Super cool. And I think, you know, um, affiliates can actually definitely uh, get a lot more of ideas or, you know, such information through you know different online channels obviously but also from stack marketer and you know applift obviously right i mean yeah, i mean th that's one of the things we both probably try to do right like we try to keep updated info for everyone who's you know reading exactly. or who's part of the community absolutely luke what do you think about seasonality i mean you mentioned about you know betting or i gaming a while ago i mean 
you know, in terms of seasonality, we, we were kind of sure pre-COVID that, you know, summertime, you know, sports is out, uh, you know, e-commerce um, and, and the holidays and all that. But I think it's going to be heavily affected. But I want to know what you think about it in terms of how uh, the seasonality will be, you know, shifting in terms of user yeah. or audience behavior. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, just a couple months ago, like all three major uh, professional sports here in the U.S. were like all going on at the same time, which doesn't happen. Uh, okay. So, yes, as far as that that goes, I mean, it's all it's all messed up. Um, right. What will that look like next year? It's it's kind of hard to say, to be honest. Like, I mean, typical seasonality stuff that we see, you know, in in February, everybody's going to be buying Valentine's Day stuff. You know, the holidays. Those aren't going to change, you know, but sure. even with even with everything that's happened this year, uh, Black Friday and the holidays, like the numbers are pretty good. Like people are still buying gifts and, and we're going to have, you know, Christmas and, and all that. Um, so, you know, there are certain certain trends and certain things that we can look at next year and say, OK, that's definitely going to happen. Like that's going to be fine. Uh, as far as, you know, specific uh, industry trends, industry things that you see, like, you know, travel in the summer like right. who knows like who honestly like who knows if that's going to be what happens we talked about like this industry like we're very flexible like it's, it's i i compare it to like a roller coaster like there's ups and there's downs and and there and you just never know what's going to come around the corner so i'm i'm confident that no matter what happens next year like we're going to be ready for it and and for the most part we're going to see see it coming and we're going to try to take advantage of the opportunities that you know, we're given sort of thing, um, you know, with COVID and, and the vaccine, like there might be some opportunity there once it's, uh, once it's actually out and everybody's taking it. So, um, I think we just kind of have to wait and, uh, kind of, kind of keep our, keep our eyes open and just kind of wait and see what happens. Uh, one thing, I mean, not, not, not self-promotion or anything like that, but one thing with Aflift is like one of the goals of the community is for us to, to use our combined uh, powers, you know, the, the entire community to try to figure out, okay, what is next? Like, what is the next, what is the next push notification? That's right. Right. So, you know, we are 40,000 people, like-minded people trying to do the same thing, all trying to find the next push notifications. Uh, so hopefully, you know, that's with the power of the community, we're going to be able to do that. That's right. Um, Emmanuel, I want to know from you in terms of, creatives wise you know i mean luke mentioned about push notifications okay we're going to talk a little bit about that later on but firstly i want to know about the creatives and how all of the shift all of you know well covid is around us so obviously it's one of the main topics that we have but how do you think uh, affiliates should uh you know uh perhaps launch campaigns in in any and any channel in any and in, in marketing channel be it social, be it, you know, push, be it pop. Um, what kind of strategy should affiliates have in terms of their creatives? Should they take advantage of the COVID, you know, situation? Well, well that's pretty hard to say how, like, it, it really depends on how. I think their general strategy shouldn't change because the main thing right. you learn as an affiliate is that you kind of test with a smaller budget, see what works, and then you do more of what works, right? Like, you optimize step by step. You're not, like, hoping to just hit a miracle type of campaign. It's nice exactly. when it happens, but don't plan with it, right? So sure. I think it's it should just be like the same strategy. I would say keep doing the same thing that's been recommended for like, you know, as long as I can remember in the industry, which is look at look a little bit like at what's working, try some some of that, then adjust, try to improve what's working, you know, to optimize it even better, like find better traffic, improve right. your creators with some of your own ideas, but don't, you know, try to reinvent the, the wheel. And I think that's that advice will always stay. Uh, it's kind of like one of those evergreen advices that you can always give. And it, it, kind of, it, it, it works. That's the way everyone tells it. Um, so I would say it depends on what you're promoting, right? Like if you, if you're, Coming back to the travel niche, if you have very good news about travel, you might want to use some, you know, hey, COVID is kind of, you know, um, like leave COVID behind and travel kind of thing. Maybe it's an angle that works. I don't know. Uh, maybe worth testing. But yeah, I, I would probably say don't go overboard with anything that has to do with 
only a temporary thing. Just kind of see what's working. There's plenty of spy tools out there to use. Facebook's ad library is all open as well, right? So look at what's working, test that out a little bit and adjust it, of course, based on your product, your geo and everything like that. I mean, I've definitely, you know, had some push notifications on my, on my, on my laptop. Yeah, I, I, like uh, some dating offers with, you know, girls on face mask and all that shit. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know what? You got to do what you got to do as an affiliate, right? But Luke, yeah, you got to test it out. Misleading creatives. I mean, are affiliates really heavily kind of like using such strategies? Mm, well, I think they test everything, right? So if something misleading works, they would try to do more of that. Because at the end of the day, it's like there's, uh, although a lot of verticals are evergreen, the verticals are evergreen, but offers themselves tend to not be over evergreen. So you need to kind of, you know, uh, strike the iron while it's hot. So right. that's, that's a thing that we know in our industry is always tough to balance. Like how aggressive do you go? Where do you draw the line? And then people have different standards, right? Like do you draw the line uh, based on what you think is uh, like based on the rules of the platform, the rules of the offer, uh, what your mom thinks, you know, where do you draw the line? That's always <laughs> an individual choice. I mean, yeah. look, in terms of that, um, you know, do affiliates discuss about creatives? Uh, and strategies. I mean, what, what do you see on Athlift? Um, do they discuss about these kind of situations where you're like, well, do I use misleading creatives? Do I use face mask? What's going on? Yeah, we actually just had a thread uh, within the past week about, you know, how aggressive should you get? Like, is it ethical to do this? Or, you know, is it more, can, can, morally, can you allow yourself to do certain things? And I would say my cutoff <laughs> is, is, you know, I'm not nearly as aggressive as a lot of the other people are, but a lot of people depend on affiliate marketing a lot, you know, their actual campaigns a lot more than I do. I mean, I run campaigns full time, but I also have two other businesses. So it's not like True. my bread and butter necessary. Like if my campaign fails, I can still feed my kids. So I understand, you know, when people get more aggressive than what I personally would get. And I, and I, you know what? And in the past, I've done plenty of things that now I look at and I'm like, damn, I probably should have done that. <laughs> so, you know, like, I, I get it. I understand, like, where people are coming from. And I understand, you know, trying to tote the line of, of not trying to, sure. you know, step over. Um, but personally, it's, it's not my thing. As far as the masks go and COVID in general, like, a lot of marketing is about trying to connect, right? Like, you you want to get the person's attention. Exactly. Once you have their attention, you've got to try to connect with them at, in some minor way so that they're actually interested in what you have to say. So I understand, like, the attempts at, at using COVID as, like, an angle uh, to connect with everybody else because everybody else is experiencing it as well. But I think we're all kind of sick and tired of it, too. So it's not necessarily an angle that I'm going to take in, in my marketing because I mean, I'm, I'm tired of it. You know, like I think we're all just so sick and tired. Like we're talking about wanting to go to conferences and have a great time together and, and be done with this, you know? So it's not necessarily something that I'm going to use, but there's definitely plenty of people using it. Right. You mentioned something about you launching campaigns, Luke. Uh, you know what? I'm, I, I, I got to ask you, what kind of campaigns are you running? What kind of, what kind of <laughs> offers are you running? I mean, uh, a lot of people I've... would be interested. <laughs> Sure. So I run a little bit of everything, to be honest. Like, I mean, I, I don't set the bar at like, I, I don't have a specific, I don't have a specific vertical. Um, but what are your top three say. offers right now though? Oh, oh, okay. You just want me to spill my, spill my beans <laughs> and tell you everything about all my kids. <laughs> well, this podcast is very uh, raw and that's, I, that's what I, I see where we're going it. with this. Let's, uh, let's, you know, um, I do. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not dependent on it, you know, but I still like that extra money. I don't want to give it all away. <laughs> all right. You know what? I'm going to respect the boundary there. I mean, I tried. Yeah. I tried. I appreciate uh, it. I appreciate it. <laughs> um, Emmanuel, in terms of ad formats, you know, some people like a way back ago, they were saying like, we're talking about five, six years ago, that pop is dead, you know, and then we had push coming alive, very strong. 2017, 18, 19, 20. But in terms of new ad formats or yeah, new things that affiliate should be aware of, um, what do you see is coming? What is the next big thing in terms of the ad format? 
Well, for ad format specifically, it's always very difficult for me to think because I don't know, you know, what's Facebook planning, what's Google planning, right. uh, what's Propeller ads planning because I didn't know you were going to get into push ads either. So, but that happened right a few years ago. So, <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly what's going to come, but what I would say in general for ad formats or like when it comes to advertising, it's not exactly on topic, but I would think whatever ad formats there are there, try to kind of build your own audience and try to connect directly with people. So if you're gathering sure. a push list, that might work. SMS list, maybe that's the new thing that was old and now it's again hot, you know, like email. I'm a fan of email, of course, a little bit biased there, but you know, <laughs> having an email list is always very useful. So in general, I would say affiliate or any type of marketer, you know, Look at the CPMs at Facebook, they're always growing, even though you hear like, hey, yeah, advertisers are boycotting them, doesn't affect CPMs enough to be like, oh yeah, great, right. now it's gonna be cheap traffic. It's never cheap. Uh, so just think about around those lines of trying to get a direct connection with your audience and see what works best for whatever you're promoting, right? Like for some offers, uh, push and SMS might be great traffic. Uh, for some, you know, if, if you have uh, things that work well on native, maybe you want to have an email newsletter to work with on in a certain niche, stuff like that. I would say um, SEO is never going to be a bad thing either, probably, even though Google is making a lot of updates. But um, yeah, try to kind of get a more direct connection with your audience, regardless of ad formats that you're using. Right. So. That's true. Luke, I know for a fact that you had you know, recently mentioned about, you know, the downward trend of push notifications or, you know, the increase of in-page push. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that and what you think about, you know, push and in-page push in general? Yeah, so, I mean, the numbers that I have uh, for push honestly just aren't great as far as, like, where it's headed. Um, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, Pop ads, we've, we've been hearing about it, pop ads, death forever. You know, pops are dying, but pops are not dying. Like, it's, it's not happening. Push, I think, might be a little different. I, I do think that long term that the ad format isn't going to be as viable for affiliates um, as it has. I mean, it's already not as viable for affiliates as it, as it was, you know, a year, two years ago. Um, but just with the changes in the browsers, even changes in user behavior, I think, in general, I think pops uh, native, I'm sorry, not <laughs> native push uh is right. is kind of on its way out um we'll see but uh you know as far as what what i'm seeing personally and what i've heard from from other people is you know it's, it doesn't look great uh pops are looking great though uh native uh just native traffic is where i think a lot of my focus is going to be in in 2021 we'll see i think native ads are uh underutilized by affiliates for the most part and I think with the changes that we're seeing in the industry and just in general, I think that's probably going to be an ad format that gets a, a little bit more attention from not just top end, uh, high end affiliates, but like your, your more uh, beginner and intermediate affiliate as well. Um, in page uh, push and traditional banners, I think we're going to see more of that, uh, you know, the, the typical uh, banner on a, on a web page is not going anywhere. Like even with ad block and everything else, like I think that right. ad format, we're going to see a resurgence. Like that's kind of been like, everybody's been so focused on these, you know, newfangled push notifications and stuff like that, that those other ad formats have kind of gotten ignored by your traditional affiliate. But uh, I think it's, it's going to see a resurgence. Email. I am a huge email guy, all about email. Uh, and what is interesting is on Applyft, we're seeing more and more discussions around building an email list. Whereas like right. everybody's been so focused on, on the other types of uh, ad formats and the other types of marketing that we, I mean, for, for a year, somebody probably never even mentioned the word email. And now it's like everybody all of a sudden is like, wait a minute, you know, this is a good opportunity. And I, I personally have, have, have benefited tremendously from my email list. I mean, I, my email lists are how I've built my businesses. So I'm a huge supporter of email, uh, always have been, and it's good to see affiliates trying to look at that as an opportunity for them, you know, not just, you know, building your own product and, and doing email marketing that way, but as an affiliate, you know, how, how can you use an email list uh, to try to be more effective at promoting, you know, affiliate products. So I'm, I'm a big, big uh, email guy, and I'm all about, you know, 2021 being the year of the email for the affiliate. 
Super, super. Emmanuel,、uh, I have more questions further, but I really want you to, you know, intro a little bit on、uh, Stack Market or tell us, you know, what's it all about, and yeah, tell our audience what you know Stack Market is, please. Cool. Well,、um, we're essentially a daily newsletter, so we、uh, send it Monday to Friday. And、uh, yeah, we're essentially a newsletter dedicated to marketers. So we try to feature the latest news, trends, case studies, you know,、uh, actionable advice. Is also something that we dig into a lot from Twitter threads, Facebook groups, and、uh, all other communities. And we try to condense that into a five to ten minute daily read. So essentially, it's like if you are doing anything that has to do with online marketing, it's a nice way to stay up to date without having to go through hundreds of sources because we go through them、uh, instead, and it's free for everyone to sign up to. So yeah, that's essentially it. That's that's great. I mean, I'm subscribed to you know your your email newsletter, so I mean, I find it really fascinating. Uh, thank you so much for that,、uh, Luke. Tell me about Athlift now for all the audience, for all the listeners that we have that don't know what you know Athlift is. Please do share a few information about it. Sure. So Athlift is a premium affiliate marketing forum, and、uh, it's premium because it costs money. It's not a free forum.、Uh, I launched Athlift about two and a half years ago、uh, because I saw that in our industry, if you are somebody that is fairly new to the industry. There was no great source of information. Everybody is asking their affiliate manager for this,、right. or you know, trying to trying searching old blog posts, searching on Google, like trying to find, and they're finding content that's three years old, that's outdated. Like we said, the affiliate industry is a roller coaster. Like push notifications may not even, you know, two years from now, it would be useless maybe to be looking up information about push. But I guarantee you, there's going to be some guru talking about push. So Athlift is a community that's kind of powered by the affiliate. Like we, you know, I, I lead the community. I have、uh, like 17 years experience in affiliate marketing.、Um, but my goal of it is to provide a platform for affiliates where anyone can go join and learn and discuss、uh, everything there is to discuss about our industry.、Um, I'm very passionate about affiliate marketing. Like I've been doing this a long time. I love affiliate marketing. I love everything about it. Even my campaigns that bomb and lose money, like I, I just love everything. <laughs> I love everything there is about this thing. So, and it's always been like that. I've always enjoyed it. So, I wanted to create a, a community and a platform where we could go and, and discuss all this stuff.、Um, the reason, and, and the first question everybody's going to ask is like, why didn't I just make it free? And that's because if you look at the content that you find on the free、uh, free forums and the free sources of the information, it's one of those you pay what you get for situations, right? It's all spammy and it's all garbage. So we have we have a we have a cost a monthly membership. It's only twenty dollars a month, and that is to try to keep out the people who aren't going to provide actual valuable information. Like the people that are in the community are paying for it and they actually care about you know affiliate marketing and what we're doing.、Um, so and then it also provides an opportunity for us to do cool stuff like contests and, and things like that. Um, so yeah, I, I created Athlift as just a way for us to be able to all connect in the industry and actually the people that care and the, not just the scammers, but the people that like want to do、Absolutely. this right.、Um, that's that's what we're there for.、Uh, there's about forty five thousand people in the community now. We're growing tremendously, and、uh, we want everybody that is interested to become a part of what we're doing because the more people that are in the community, the more information that's going to be shared and the more value that everyone's going to get from it. But the price is always going to be twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for that. I mean, to all the listeners right now, I mean, you know, you can't get、uh, you know the best、uh, portals than this, like StackMarketer.com. Subscribe to this newsletter. I think it's great. Athlift. I think it's great for seasoned and new affiliates actually to find out all you know all of the trends, all of you know kind of. What affiliates are talking about? What is the next big thing? What kind of ad formats? I do have to mention that、uh, you know,、um, with Propeller Ads traffic, obviously you guys know that we have pop, we have push notification, we have in-page push, which is blowing up right now.、Um, I have different opinion about push. I think push is going to be you know stronger. I think that that's what we see with when it comes to the trends that we see in our traffic and you know in our inventory. However,、um, I think that a lot of the listeners would. Be very interested to find out more of these information、uh, because, well, 
I didn't want to mention it in the beginning, but I'm mentioning it now. We have a PDF report for 2021 trends. So apart from all of the information, you know, the guys, Emmanuel and Luke have mentioned, uh, we are providing you with a fresh PDF report uh, with all of the predictions and trends for 2021. So make sure you find it somewhere in the description below. And uh, also we're gonna leave all of the details of stackmarketer.com and Athlift, obviously, uh, for that, you know, so you can, you know, check out, um, you know, the social media, the website and everything else. Uh, guys, I don't know if you had you know, fun. I, I sure did. Uh, thank you for joining us, for being with us, Luke, Emmanuel. Thanks for having us. It's Absolutely. always fun. And uh, yeah, he, here's to a great 2021, right? Like hopefully our predictions, our positive parts, you know, turn out to be true. Because <laughs> we, we were pretty, I would say like, we you were, were pretty you know, accurate. Yeah. <laughs> But I think we mostly focus like, yeah, it's going to be better in 2021. That's kind of like, the, oh, the fuel we kind of got. It's, we're going to handle 2021. So let's you know see. What? Hopefully yeah. it's good. You know what? Let's not kind of like sugarcoat it. I mean, <laughs> it's been very difficult. 2021, guys, be patient. Let me know. Let's, yeah. It's all one team. And yeah, hopefully <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll get the most of 2021. Hopefully, right? For sure. Good to me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, happy holidays. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. Wherever you are, uh, I hope you have, you know, you know, a, a great time with your family. Um, regardless of the situation, let's make the best of it, right? Let's make the most out of it wherever you are. We can't travel anywhere. Um, there are restrictions. However, you know what? Family first, right? So I think that, you know, we're going to be just fine with our family. Uh, for the holidays and let's hope that 2021 indeed is indeed is you know something spectacular for for all of us not just in affiliate marketing but everywhere you know um, it sure is not you know something beneficial for all of us to be in this pandemic situation for I don't know three more months guys I don't know maybe a year two years <laughs> God knows fuck it uh, thank you so much make sure to follow us on all our social media obviously on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, where else? Are you on TikTok? Yeah, I'm just, ah, just saying. Are we on TikTok? Are we allowed to say that we're on TikTok? We're not on TikTok. No, we're not. No, we're not. No, we're not. No. <laughs> I'm not either, no. just saying. Like, that's the one platform <laughs> you forgot about, probably. You know what? I don't know. I, I, I really wanted to like open an account and just start doing all that kind of dance thing and just that'd be a little bit internet famous, but oh, I just can't be bothered to that. Well, I hope. I hope maybe you guys are on TikTok. Maybe I can follow you guys. Luke? Nope. Nope. Nothing? <laughs> no. Nope. Well, Me neither. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much. I uh, appreciate it. appreciate your time, really. And you know what? Let's, you know, uh, catch up soon, hopefully offline. And thank you for having, you joining us, guys. Of course. Until next time. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>